Hey, what's up everybody? Jesse, Southern Reels Fish, and back for another build video. And today I am going to show you how I constructed my homemade live scope perspective mount that they just announced this past week. I don't know if you guys seen it or not. If not, I'll put the link above. Uh, go check it out. But they announced a new mode that they have enabled for the live scope system besides just looking forward and looking down. Now they've figured out how to flip the transducer on its side and do like a perspective view that gives you a live image of what's out in front of you in the structure and also makes it work a whole lot better in shallow water, which was one of the biggest downfalls to the live scope was anytime you got under say six feet or so, it really didn't do that well because of all the noise in the image and stuff. Anyway, they announced it and they made the software update available for all the chart plotters and the, you know, the, lap, the live scope black box and everything itself. Uh, but then they said that their mount is five to eight weeks out, which is hilarious. Why would you announce a product if you don't have your mount ready to ship yet? Which I may be wrong. I mean, that's just looking on their uh, website what it says. But anyway, I got looking at it. I was like, you know, that's just it looks like a simple piece of metal to me. So I thought about it and I went to Lowe's and bought a few things and come home and built it. And I've got it here working on my homemade rotating mount on my kayak. Pretty much ready to go test it out tomorrow. But before I did that, I wanted to show you guys what I did and how much it costs to get it up and running. So let's do it. All right, y'all, hopefully y'all can see this. This is basically it just mounted on my rotating assembly that I've made. I already painted some indexing marks on here that pretty much identify, you know, the position for down scan, forward scan and perspective scan. Pretty much just line it up with the center of the bar. Right now I've got it horizontal to where, you know, that would basically be looking towards the front of the kayak and scanning. And if I want to change it, all I gotta do is, you know, just pull this up real quick, just rotate it right up into the position here. And then most of the time, just rotate this right forward to line it up with the, the F mark. And then I'm in basically forward scan mode. I can look around all behind me, all underneath of me and it works well. Now it will clear my kayak. I've just got the, the arm kind of up right now, so it clears my trailer. And then if I wanted to, you know, of course, go to down scan, I just rotate it like that, and I'm in down scan mode. So it works, you know, I'm basically excited about it. I can't wait to get this thing out tomorrow and try it out. Now I have noticed on my setup here that it doesn't seem to need to be this long. And I think the reason they've made this portion this long from judging the picture is so this cable here is when you have it mounted on a trolling motor shaft. Of course, the trolling motor shaft is just gonna keep going right on down and they didn't want this cable, you know, rubbing up against it. So I think that's why they made it this long. I'm probably just gonna shorten this myself, but I'm just gonna take it and try it as close to copying their design as I can see and then pretty much improve upon it myself. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But I want to take it apart real quick over on the bench and just show you basically how it's put together. All right, guys, here we are at the bench. And basically what I have here is the stock mount that came with the live scope transducer. It pretty much mounts this way onto your trolling motor. I pretty much have it mounted on my home built PVC rotating mount that I have. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it above right now. This is angled up, it's supposed to be that way. And the transducer pretty much bolts right to this using this supplied uh, shouldered, you know, bolt right here, a washer, and then this rubber washer, it's a thick rubber washer. That's what pretty much holds the transducer to this from the inside, it bolts through that hole right there. So what I did is I just took all of that off, studied it for a little bit and went to Lowe's and I found this aluminum bar here is basically all this is. They have it right in the hardware aisle. It actually comes in a length like this. I think it was $7.50 for this length of bar. When I figured the cost of building this, I'm gonna divide it down by how many this could actually build because you could probably get about six mounts out of this one piece of bar. Just kind of studied it. I came up with a total length of about three and a half inches, I believe it is, cut it and I put it in my vise and bent it. Now, one thing about bending this aluminum bar like this, you can't crimp it and bend it at a sharp corner because it's just gonna snap right off. So you kind of have to bend it, you know, in an arch like that, nice and smooth, which you can do just by putting it in a vise and pulling on it and just slowly working that arch into it until you get about the angle that you want. And for what I could tell by looking on the video and just my own common sense, they have it tilted down about 20 degrees 
below horizontal, it looks like, maybe a little bit less. So I'm not sure I'm gonna have to play with that when I get out on the water. But yeah, I pretty much just bent it into this arch right here. It's about this much angle. And then I drilled two holes that were appropriate size. One big enough for this shoulder, on the shoulder bolt to go through like that. And then on the top, I went and got a stainless steel bolt here, which is a 5 16 by 24 at Lowe's. It's a little bit bigger. It fit into everything a little bit better. And all right, so to assemble my homemade mount to the transducer and the mount from the factory, I pretty much have this 5 16 by 24 bolt that I got from Lowe's. It was a one inch long. I cut it down to three quarters and I have just a stainless steel washer on it. And I pretty much just go right through the hole right there like that. Then I'll take this uh, rubber washer here. It's an inch and a quarter, I believe, rubber washer, which slips over this nice and snug like that. Kind of holds it all together. Then pretty much their factory assembly, it goes right up against these splines. And what that rubber washer does is provide you with a friction fit, but still allows it to move. Then I'll take another stainless washer like this, drop it into the hole like so. And pretty much you want a, of course, a 5 16 24. I use a nylock and I also put a little bit of blue thread locker on this because you don't want this to come loose because you're tightening it up, but not enough to where it's actually tight. And you're gonna be rotating that mount back and forth so you don't want this to come loose. So that's why I recommend using a nylock and some thread locker on this, which I need to grab real quick. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little dab of the thread locker in there. All right, then we're just gonna take the appropriate socket and wrench and tighten this up to where it's snug, but still able to move. And you kind of just gotta use your judgment on that. All right, just a hair tighter on that right there. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. All right, so this is ready to, you know, basically bolt back up to the shaft, whatever you're mounting it on. And then to get the transducer, bolted to it. I went through several different tries and options before I came up with one that gave me the right amount of friction, but still allowed this collared portion of this bolt to tighten down against the transducer. Cause this, this one here, you're going to tighten down tight and you have to have the appropriate set of washers between this arm and the transducer. So when this is actually tight, it still can move, but not too much. So you kind of, I had to play with it. So what I ended up with was taking this nylon washer, which I'll put the part number in, put the bolt on it. And it's a little bit bigger than it should be, but it's okay. And then take this rubber washer, which was the original rubber washer in the factory mount. And then put that on that like so. And then this will fasten down to the transducer itself. We'll bolt right up to that. So we can go do that real quick. Okay guys, here we are back at the boat. So we're gonna reassemble this real quick. I pretty much have the arm ready to go, lock tight, everything in here is good. I've got my rotating shaft here. Let's make sure that's lined up right. And we're gonna put this piece here, hold that up, and go ahead and get these four mount bolts in it and get it lined up with my mark up top. I'll probably speed this portion up. All right. So now that we have that mounted, just to show you what I was talking about, you take the transducer, pretty much with nothing on it, just get it kind of in position. And we have that shouldered bolt, that nylon washer, and the factory rubber washer that used to be inside the mount. And basically stick that through there like that. And then go ahead and thread this all the way together. Now this washer is kind of a loose fit around there. I'll probably change this out, but this works for now. And if you find something better, please let me know to get this kind of a snug fit proper. Cause like I said, this bolt is going to tighten all the way down to the transducer, but you still want enough clearance to where you can rotate it. So what I'm saying it's tight, but it still moves between the two modes. So that's pretty much it. It's hooked back up, ready to go. Biggest thing I noticed about this mount is I used to have my cable tied down, you know, taped to my mast right here as it comes down. But now I had to undo all of that because when you move it up and down like this switching, you know, in between the modes, it changes the cable a lot. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with that yet, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just excited to get it out and try it tomorrow. So 
that's pretty much it. Just so you can see it from up top view. That's my indexing mark. It pretty much shows when it's facing forward. Actually, it's a little bit off right now, so I'll make adjustments to that. Rotate it, get around whatever it needs to do. All right, folks, there you go. A nice little fun shop build. Now I'm sure there's gonna be some bugs that I have to work out of it as with anything that you build at home. This is my first iteration of it. I'm gonna take it out tomorrow, like I said, and do some fishing and see how it turns out. And hopefully uh, it works. I mean, I'm pretty sure it'll work, but biggest thing that I'm worried about is the angle at which I had the bar bent, whether or not it's the right angle. Luckily with the setup that I have here, all I have to do is just loosen my ram mount and I can angle the pole a little bit and kind of dial it in just to see what's best. And then of course, alter the mount afterwards to the proper angle. Kind of copied for what I could tell looked about right off of what I saw online, but who knows until you actually try it. I have to say, honestly, I'm surprised Garmin is charging as much as they are for this thing. I mean, it's a little bracket and probably a little bit of hardware and what looks like an overlay sticker for your live scope with the indicators on it. That's a hundred bucks, you know, that just blows me away. It's just, I mean, I've got, I think, $11 invested in material and I've got enough material to build six of these off of that 11 bucks. So yeah, I think that's a bit crazy. But anyway, still love Garmin. Anytime you guys are ready to sponsor me, I'm here. <laughs> I'm uh, going to get my fishing gear together because like I said, I'm going fishing tomorrow and I've been working, kind of tinkering with this all day. So I have to get all my stuff ready and uh, get out on the water and have some fun. And of course, get some footage of this thing in action for you guys. So that's it. Wish me luck. Peace out.